What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video, Cup of Kodo 1. So today, we are back into machine learning with our second video. So, before we can get into coding just yet again, I, we have to quickly go over some basic, not I don't want to say fundamental pieces, but um, before you get coding, you have, you have to work things out on paper sometimes. You have to think about things logically. So first off, we have to understand the problem that we're even trying to uh, answer or tackle. So specifically uh what is what is the problem that we're attempting to deal with you want to ask yourself uh, some you know certain questions what are you attempting to solve this and this is also this 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 thought process is also how you're going to determine which algorithm you're going to be using which is the best algorithm for the problem at hand um who's going to win when you get your solution uh what is winning in regarding to your solution of what you're trying to solve who benefits from the problem? What kind of agendas are you dealing with? Um, you have to be very specific and concise. And how will uh, machine learning surpass existing solutions? Can you even collect data that you would need um, to, 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 to solve what it is you think you need to do? So it's the number, one of the most important aspects that I see nobody ever doing in, in machine learning is understanding the task at hand. The task is going to be the objective for the algorithm. And at this point, the two different kind of tasks we're going to be dealing with from objective for algorithms is going to be supervised and unsupervised. Now, there is reinforcement, but that's going to be another time. Supervised. unsupervised Let's put this on a new on a new slide so certain things I want you to think of when you hear this supervised we're dealing one with labeled data can't even spell tonight which means what it means that if um if I'm dealing with uh, one example I'll have a picture of an animal and it will have so I'm gonna have my image and it's going to be labeled dog or the species whatever it's going to be so I have labeled data so that myself and the system will know when it's training my input and output what how it matches up what is right and what is wrong essentially and we're gonna see this uh, supervised learning predictably pr primarily in something called predictive modeling predictive modeling is exactly what you think is going to be so angels examples that you hear um you know spam emails or house prices or septa length or um and when we get into the financial market they try to use supervised learning to find different patterns that exist within the within the data now uh unsupervised the other category we're going to be dealing with is a lot messier Unsupervised has unlabeled data. So you're giving it a bunch of images, but nowhere are you telling it what that image is. So what you're doing is you're, you're having the machine saying, well, I'm, I'm going through these 1,000 images, and I'm finding these particular patterns among those images, and I'm going to classify uh, these images into particular groups. Um, and it, so it might it might give us a classification answer and say out of these, you know, 1,000 images you gave me, I was able to put these guys into three different groups, and this is this is how I'm basing it. We never told it what the groups are. We didn't tell how many groups it needed. Um, this is just we gave it unlabeled data, and it did its own classification piece. Um, so as you can see, the primarily difference between supervised and unsupervised is going to be the labeled data and what we're doing. So now with unsupervised, you primarily see this in things like automated data analysis. which is going to scream, whoops a daisy, I'm just going to cross this out, customer segmentation, that's a big piece of automated data analysis, and automated signal extraction. And this is a key word here, automated signal extraction. That Putting that word in just made this unsupervised uh, extraordinarily broad, extraordinarily, extraordinarily broad. Um, and we're going to have some other key terms that we're going to be using as we go through this. But essentially, in unsupervised and supervised learning, 
think from an intuitive standpoint, you're supervising the learning in this case, meaning you're, you're, if you, if you have a child, um, let's do this. Dun, 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 dun. Yay. So there's our kid. Happy as hell, right? Get some crazy hair. Tomorrow's Halloween. And your, um, your task is for educating this child. So on this side of the screen, you have the teacher saying, uh, this is a tree. So then the kid's learning, all right, every time I see this kind of an object thing, I'm thinking of a tree. And this is your fork. And this, also happy, is a cat. So you're giving it the label that's associated with the image. In this case, we're doing images. So of course, this would be supervised. Whereas this, uh, the teacher on this side over here is just doing this and not giving it any kind of a label. So the kid's kind of going like, all right, all right, all right. I don't yet. It's trying to determine how it's going to, how it's going to categorize these three things um, and to kind of see where it's going to put it, what can it learn from it. Uh, so you can see supervised is obviously going to be a lot cleaner. Uh, and that's the, one of the biggest reasons why supervised is a hell of a lot larger in terms of application than unsupervised learning. My handwriting is totally getting better. I don't know what you're all talking about. So, uh, let's break them down. Ah, that's fine. So we're just going to put some, do some association words. When I, so as an example, when I study supervised, this is what I do. I just think I have certain words that come up. I think labeled. My brain's going to say predictive. Each data point equals correct answer. Each data point is tied with its label. It tells the algorithm what is correct while we're training it. We're supervising it while it's learning. And we're going to think of regression which regression is simply modeling continuous target variables. That's exactly what I'm thinking. And I'm also thinking classification. Classification is we're modeling categorical target variables. So we're modeling continuous target, categorical target variables with supervised learning under the classifications of regression. I'm sorry, the categories of regression and classification. Now these algorithms are very, very similar. The regression algorithm and classification algorithm are very, very similar in what they do. And you're going to see that as we go and we do some coding. So this is going to, so supervised. This is, you know, this is how my brain works in terms of memorizing. So supervised label predictive, each data point equals a correct answer. And usually the two that are going to fall under supervised can be regression and classification. Regression is modeling continuous and classification is modeling categorical target variables. And now let's run over to one second. Where am I going here? So unsupervised, what's my brain going to say? Well, unlabeled, absolutely no predetermined answer. There's no predetermined answer. The algorithm is going to learn the patterns from the data without any kind of supervision. That's why it's unsupervised. Um, this typically deals with clustering. That's why I said customer segmentation before. And clustering is simply finding groups among the data. Because again, we're, nowhere did we give it 
um, labels. So it has to kind of guesstimate based on the algorithm which uh, which which uh, data points belong with which other data points by similarity, essentially. Um, machine learning is from the structure of the data. This is simply from the structure of the data. So as you saw before, I'm just going to quickly throw over here in a different color so that it's maybe this, this might help some of you too. This is based on the structure of data and this is based on the labeling of the data. That's how we're, it's essentially, and all we're doing is these, these are just words classifying uh, in a categorical sense, the different data that we're, we're playing with. So that's just what I want you to think in regards to unsupervised, supervised, um, the different, the different words that I want you to come to mind when you're thinking of it. Uh, and like I said, with uh, supervised, you know, the progression classification unsupervised, it's, it's messier because we don't have the labeled data. It's way more computer intense. Um, it's not, it is useful, but it's not as useful as, as, um, supervised learning. However, it absolutely does have its place when we get to, uh, reinforcement learning and you will see that absolutely. Um, I'm going to cut this one off today and we're going to hit in tomorrow with model complexity. And when we start with model complexity, uh, we have maybe a, a few minutes of, of uh, handwriting and then it's uh, straight into coding. We're going to be doing a bias variance trade-off, but how to do it from an intuitive standpoint. All right, guys, take it easy.